I'd like to preface this, preface this by saying that I'm stating my opinions, and my opinions do not necessarily coincide, coincide with Dean Stoneyers or the Global Sciences or the beautiful holiday in the hotel here. And what I'm going to talk about today is what, in my opinion, was the most remarkable medical, I used to think discovery, but it's actually a rediscovery, that we may have seen in this generation, or at least for a hundred years. And it has to do basically with a new paradigm in medicine. And that paradigm, which emerged at Albert Einstein College of Medicine in New York City in the spring of 1990, was that all disease-causing bacteria, microbes, germs, pathogens, parasites, and viruses are completely controllable by electrification of the blood. And that means that if you put a very small current, typically 50 to 100 microamperes, millions of an ampere through the blood, it somehow alters the outer protein layer of any parasites known, any germs, any bacteria, so they can no longer attach to human cells, reproduce themselves, use those cells to reproduce their own RNA, DNA, and they die are neutralized in the blood, the body flushes them out through the kidneys, the liver, the lymph, and you're well. Now, when I first read about this, and incidentally, you might find this interesting that it's only been mentioned about three times that I know of in the press since its invention, and this happens to be the greatest discovery in medicine that, in my opinion, has been done well, forever. The first article on this was in the March 20th, 1991, Science News, page 247. And it announced that Dr. Stephen Colley, K-A-A-L-I, and his colleagues at Albert Einstein College of Medicine had discovered that if they put a couple of wires in a Petri dish, containing a high concentration of human blood and HIV, that the HIV virus could no longer attach to those cells. That meant that they had a universal cure for AIDS. But how many times have you read in the press that there is no cure for AIDS, that the government has spent $1.2 to $1.3 billion in researching antibiotics, and researching vaccines and researching chemicals that are supposed to slow this down. And the best that I know of that they have come up with to date are the combination therapies, they're called cocktails. <clears throat> and Dr. Wu was made man of the year a year and a half ago for pointing out that when you combined AZT, DDI, DD5, you could cut down the AIDS count in the blood tremendously, but what you probably haven't read is the latest research that reveals that a third of AIDS patients cannot take these combination therapies because of gastrointestinal upsets. Another third of them cannot take the viruses because, I mean the antivirals, because it does nothing. They don't get any better, they don't get any worse and the third that can take them, which represent $5,000 to $20,000 a year in uh, income for the pharmaceutical houses, will very rapidly die the moment they stop taking them. Why? <clears throat> because the viruses left in the blood are so virulent that they have the power of overpowering the patient in just a few days and they will die of HIV of a much more virulent form. Don't forget the HIV mutates very, very rapidly. One of the most rapidly mutating met, uh, retroviruses known. And so it's rather strange that since their discovery, only three or four articles have appeared. An interesting article did appear in the Houston Post on Wednesday, March 20th, 1991, in which they announced the discovery. And then later, 
In Longevity Magazine, December 1992, page 14, in which Dr. Colley and his colleagues tried to backtrack the discovery, and they say right in this article that it will not be ready for 15 years because it hasn't been researched. The truth is, it has been researched, it does work, it can be applied today. So this 15 years appears to me to be the product of suppression of the information. Somebody doesn't want this information out here, and if people have accidentally heard about it, they've got to tell them, no, it's not ready yet, it doesn't work, etc. Well, in about 1991, I heard about this article, the one in Science News, and I ran to the library to get it, and it was gone. We tried a number of libraries in Orange County, California. Finally, from a librarian, got one of their reserve copies of Science News. So I wrote to the college, and I asked for a copy of the paper. I'm a doctor, not a medical doctor, a DSC, Doctor of Science. If I could have a copy of the paper which was published in the spring uh, edition of the conference of combination therapies in Washington, D.C., I was amazed to find that it didn't exist. It had been apparently removed from the journals and the proceedings. So I started with a private investigator to find an attendee at the conference that happened to have a copy of this paper, and we found it. It existed. It had been written by Dr. Colley, K-A-A-L-I, and Associates, and it gave me the basic information that they had made this discovery, and it later turned out not to be a discovery at all. It was a total rediscovery. It did work. Now, who would like to see this information suppressed? Well, just guess what this is going to do in decimating the incomes of the medical profession, the doctors, and cutting the incomes of the pharmaceutical houses to practically nothing. So what I did is I designed and built <coughs> apparatus for doing this work at home. And you can cure yourself at home with no doctors, no nurses, no drugs, no herbs, no pharmaceuticals, easily, and at the time we thought about 21 days, now it's about four to five. But this is the original article that I wrote and published and gave away. I never charged anyone a nickel for this work. And because 10-year-old kids who were computer nerds could build it, but some people couldn't, we published a complete parts list which you take to Radio Shack, put on the counter, and if you don't know what a resistor is, you let the clerk get it for you, and it costs 15 cents. 100K pot costs $1.34, etc. But with this complete parts list, and any 10-year-old kid who knows which end of a soldering iron to hold, you can cure yourself. Now this is pretty remarkable because the message here is basically take back your power. You yourself have the sovereign power over controlling any infectious disease. Now, diabetes is not considered an infectious disease, multiple sclerosis, etc., 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 broken bones. But if your disease is based on any infection from any known or unknown parasite, virus, germ, fungus, it will cure it. But instead of using the word cure, I'm surely supposed to use the word spontaneous remission, because if you use the word cure and you're not a medical doctor, it's a felony in most of the states, including the one where I live. <laughs> 